Today, we're making cushions for outdoor furniture. Come on, let's go. So I bought this white wicker furniture for my deck. You need cushions for this furniture and we're going to make it. So the outside of this chair is, is wider than the back of this chair. So I just made a template out of paper that I'm going to use to put on the foam and cut it out that way. This is three inch high density foam. Now both patterns are on there and I'm going to cut that with a really sharp knife. I'm just putting this down to protect my table. Now I'm going to cut along my pattern. Okay, that side's done now. I'm just gonna start this side here. Just gonna keep doing the same thing. Just cutting all the way down, just until I get through all the layers. Then I'll do the back. This is a little curved. I'm just gonna follow that line and then I'll do the other seat cushion. Here's the cushion that I cut for the bench seat. This is a pretty sombrella fabric. It's mostly beige, but it's got a little black and white in it. And I want the pattern to go the long way. So before I start cutting the fabric, I want to make sure that I'm cutting on the straight of the grain. Um, when you get it from the fabric store, they just cut and it's not necessarily where you want to start from. So what I'm doing, and I'm just taking a piece of fabric, pulling a piece right here, and I'm just pulling it through, pulling it through, and I'm just going, all these pieces are like extra pieces, they're longer on this side. I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna pull these out and just get rid of them. Basically, when you say straight of the grain, I want the same cutting line and I wanna make sure that it's completely straight. This line right here, I'm going to pull it, pull, I'm just gonna pull all of these out till I get to the end, and then I've got a straight line to work against. Get rid of all of that. This is my straight of the grain, right there. That's my cutting line. So I'm going to cover the foam with batting just to make it a little softer edge. So I'm going to just take a marker and start drawing a line to cut it out. So I'm going to go here and here and here. And I'm going to then cut that out and double it because I'm making two of these cushions. I'll use that template. Now we're going to spray the foam with an adhesive and put the batting on it. Protect your work environment or your floor because this stuff gets all over the place. Okay, now it's covered all around. Be sure to pull that batting nice and tight all the way around. And if you have any leftover, just go ahead and cut that off. Now that we have the batting on the cushion, so you wanna just compress it slightly and we're going to measure that. The slight compression, that is about four inches. So now we're going to use that as our measurement for our boxing. To that four inches, you're going to add one inch plus about another half inch for seam allowances. So four inches plus an inch and a half. I'm going to cut this out to be five and a half inches and the lengths, they're, so they're gonna be four of them. So two of the lengths will be the same length as this and the other two lengths will be the same length as the long side plus an inch and a half on each one. Now to cut the fabric, we're going to need two top pieces, really one for the top and one for the bottom, and that's called the plate. And then we're going to need four pieces that go around the edges to measure for the plate. You just want to use your cushion as a guide and you're going to add three quarters of an inch all the way around. I've cut the first one and I'm going to use this as a template for the second one. If you take a look at it, it's three quarters of an inch longer all the way around. Okay, so we've got the fabric all cut out. We've got the top plate and the bottom plate. We have the four pieces of boxing that the boxing is gonna be the width. And now we're just going to go and assemble this. Now I'm going to sew the boxing together. So with the right sides together, I'm going to put these two short pieces, which are the sides, on each end of one of the long pieces. I'll sew those. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other long end but with the right sides together. I'll sew this and this, and I literally am going to make a little box. And then I'm going to use this to sew onto the plates. 
Now I'm just gonna attach the boxing to the plate so with the right sides together. And of course the long side, we're just going to match that up. And I'm going to sew all of these pieces of the boxing right on to the plate. Okay, here it is all pinned on. Now that we have the boxing on one side, now we're going to attach the other piece to the boxing. But the difference here is that we need to leave one side open so we can get the foam insert in. The corners are a little tricky. When you get to the corner, just sew all the way down to the corner and then bury your needle, lift this up, turn all the fabric and just push that other fabric out of the way. And then continue. Now I'm going to finish these edges here. I have this turned right side out. I'm just gonna sew all the way down. I'm gonna keep pulling the seam to make sure it's even. And I'm just gonna sew a stitch all the way down. It's going to have kind of a piping kind of look to it. So here I've done this nice top stitch all the way around. This is just one side, but I'm going to do the other side and I'm going to do the edges as well. It gives it this nice professional look. Now I've got the top stitching done all the way around, except for this one side where the opening is to put the foam insert. I'm gonna put the insert in that now, and then we're going to close this up just by doing a seam like this so it'll match what that looks like. I just wanna show you how to close up a seam with a blind slip stitch. You see the seam is completely open. So I've got it pinned like this. And to do the slip stitch, well, obviously you start at the end, but I've already come down to this point. And all you have to do, it's pretty simple. You're going to start at the one end where, and just put a knot inside. And then you're going to come up. And pretend that this is the end. What you'll do is go on the inside of the fabric to start and then come up through the edge, right at the edge, and then you'll pull that one through. Since I've already done that, I'm continuing here. Now what I wanna do is just go directly across, and then I just want to go inside that fold over, just maybe by, say, a quarter of an inch, and then pull that thread, and now I'm just going to go directly across from where that came out. Go in there and go another quarter of an inch on this side. Just continue doing that. Now I'm gonna go across again and just go about a quarter of an inch and give that a pull. Take a look at what happens to that seam. You see, you cannot see the, let me just take this pin out you cannot see the thread at all because you're sewing inside the fold over is really what you're doing. Because when you're sewing the last seam of something, you don't wanna see the thread. So that's how you do blind slip stitch. It's very simple. So I've done the piping all the way around all of the edges using the machine, but with the foam being so stiff, it's really tough to try and get this last seam done using the machine. I'm just doing it by hand. So basically I've got the same thread and I've got a double thread here and I'm just going up and down to mimic the same stitch all the way around. I'm just gonna go from one end to the other, up and down, and it's going to give me that same little piping for the back cushions, I bought these 18 inch pillow inserts and I'm just going to cover those. This pillow insert shows me the measurement of the pillow, 18 by 18. That's the size of the fabric I'm going to cut. I'm gonna soften these corners because I don't like really sharp corners. So all you have to do is, 
It's simple, you just go in about a half an inch on the corner, make a little dot. You're just gonna go about five inches out. Mark that off. Just gonna take a little bit off and you're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. Start at that half inch out, go to about five inches and you're just, then you're gonna cut right there before you sew. When you cut it off, this is what it looks like. It just takes the sharpness out of the corner. It's not drastic, but it just looks so nice. I'm just gonna sew all the way around. And when I get to the bottom, I'm just going to sew in about three inches and stop there because I need to have an opening to be able to put the pillow insert in. Now that I've sewn them all together, I'm going to turn them right side out. But before you do that, Make sure that you clip your corners to get that extra bulk out of there. When you do turn it right side out, get all the way into the corner and push all that material right to the end. You don't want it bunched up at the end. Make sure it's a nice corner. Okay, now I have it right side out. And I just gave the end a little press because after I put the pillow form in, I'm going to pin that together and then I'm just going to slip stitch it. And this will just make it easier to pin it after because if you remember I cut the fabric to the size of the pillow so it's going to be tight when I put the pillow form inside of there. Before you insert your pillow form cut off these tags. Nobody wants to feel them while they're sitting. So now I'm just going to take a needle and thread and just do a slip stitch and that's going to be beautiful. Look at that nice pillow. So I'm almost done with this project. I've already made the cushion and the cover for the bench seat and now I've made the covers for the individual seats. All I have to do is put the insert in and then finish the final seam. The reason I really like to do this top stitching, not only does it look beautiful, but this umbrella fabric unravels and if you do the top stitching, you're never gonna have a problem with it unraveling. The one word of caution when you are doing the top stitching, don't go all the way to the edges. Go, go about a half an inch away from the edge because it's so bulky there. You're going to end up breaking all your needles if you try to lock off at the end. So stop about a half inch before the end. Make sure you get all your sides. So not only all the way around here, but the little edges as well. The next thing to do is to, after I put the insert in, I have to finish this final seam. I'm going to slip stitch it, and then I'm going to finish it with another top stitch. So here's my seat cushion for the love seat. This chair is smaller in the back, it's thinner in the back, and it's a little rounded there. So I had to make a template for it, and here is my cushion that I made for it. It's thinner in the back, a little bit rounded and it looks beautiful. This is what I use for the back cushion. Here's my deck with the Adirondack chairs. They're so uncomfortable. I can't wait to get the wicker furniture out here. There are different ways I can set these cushions. I can put them on a point like this or I could put them flat like this. I could have just two if I want or I could put the third pillow right in the middle. I bought enough of this fabric to be able to refinish the chairs to my outdoor dining table. Well, I hope you enjoyed that segment. If you got anything out of it, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Maria Brown. Thanks for watching.